you might have already heard about incivility. So the phenomenon of incivility was traditionally focused on political and religious debates. And in the 21st century, the civility crisis actually focuses on how individuals speak to each other and more particularly how they disagree. Um, nowadays, with the increasing opportunities for online and public debates, incivility has received increasing attention in many fields, including the field of software development, and this is what this presentation is about. So my name is Isabella Ferreira, I'm a PhD student at Polytechnic Montreal in Canada, and together with Jin Hui Shane and Bram Adams, we characterize incivility, and we also provide insights on how to detect incivility in open source code review discussions. So in the context of software development, incivility is characterized by heated discussions that involve personal attacks and unnecessary disrespectful tone. Um, in the context of code reviews particularly, conversations can get heated because reviewers might need to bring negative news to developers, which is presumably more likely to lead to incivility. Uh, here we have an example uh, of an uncivil email sent to the Linux kernel mailing list where someone said, your whole email was horribly wrong and the patch that broke things was obviously bad, so fix your compliance too because it's obviously broken and also fix your approach to kernel programming. So in this case, the feedback could be provided in a more civil way uh, in order to be more constructive. Also, this person decided to use the disrespectful way to give the feedback and also personally attack the author of the changes. So as a consequence, that might have severe negative impact to the target person as well as to the community as a whole. The thing is that currently there is no knowledge about how incivility manifests in code review discussions as well as the causes and consequences of incivility. So currently there is no clear way to effectively um, address the problem of incivility. And to fill this gap, we want to establish more knowledge about incivility by characterizing it uh, and also understanding its causes and consequences. Uh, then our ultimate goal would be to help creating healthier working environments for open source communities, in open source communities. Um, so to create healthier environments, we first need to identify the features of discussion found in code review discussions. And based on the features of discussion that convey a disrespectful tone, then we can assess the frequency of incivility in code review discussions, as well as the causes and consequences of uncivil communication. And by understanding all of these, we can then provide means to create healthier working environments in open source communities. So to answer those questions, we analyzed 1,545 code review emails from the Linux kernel mailing list which is the central space for discussions about the Linux kernel development. Uh, we focused our analysis on rejected changes for two reasons. First, because rejected changes represent more than 66% of all changes submitted to LKML. And second, because the Linux community often rejects changes with using a harsh language when reporting the rejection, even though the reasons for rejections are purely technical. So, First, we collect code review emails from the Linux, Linux kernel mailing list uh, in the period of from January 2018 to March 2019. And in this step, more than 400,000 emails were collected. Then we group an email because an email can have many email replies. So we group individual emails by email threads using the mailbox miner tool. And that resulted in a total of 55,000 email threads. Then we developed an approach to identify rejected chains and we found that around 48% of the email threads they were rejected. And then we filtered the email threads that contained only one email, that means no patch discussions or threads that were actually accepted after doing a manual analysis. And after that, we statistically sampled the email threads to do a qualitative analysis resulting in 262 email threads compo composed of 1,545 code review emails. And finally, we performed a qualitative coding on the sampled code review emails. And the qualitative coding is an approach in which the researchers will try to identify themes from the qualitative data. And those themes, they are called codes. 
So from the extracted themes, we could identify the features of discussion, uh, presenting code review emails of rejected chains, also the cause and consequence of those emails. And we split the analysis of cause and consequences by emails sent by developers and maintainers. After identifying the features of discussion uh, in our qualitative analysis, then we are able to answer our first question, which is, asks which features of discussion can be found in code review discussions of rejected patches. Uh, we group the features of discussion according to the expressed tone. So uh, concerning the positive tone, we found that humility, consideredness, appreciation and excitement, um, those are positive tones in which humility is the most frequent feature of discussion. Then we identify the neutral features of discussion and those are sincere apologies, hope to get feedback and friendly joke. Then we identify the negative discussion features that are characterized by features that express a negative tone, such as commanding, sadness, and oppression. And finally, we identify the uncivil discussion features, which are features that express disrespectful tones, such as bitter frustration, name calling, impatience, mocking, threat, vulgarity, and irony. As you can see, bitter frustration, name calling, and impatience are the most frequent um, discussion features that represent uh, incivility. So let's take a deeper, uh, a closer look at them. So bitter frustration appears when someone expresses strong frustration when addressing a false, a false accusation, expressing expectations that are not met, and also voicing dissatisfaction or annoyance due to a lack of information or explanation. For example, when reviewing a piece of code that was submitted by a developer, a maintainer wrote, if people don't care enough about their code to even check their warnings, I'm not going to waste one second pulling the resulting garbage. It's that simple. So concerning name calling, name calling appears in sentences that include mean or offensive words directed at a person or a group, of, a group of people. For example, if you want to provide more accurate documentation, then you better come up with something which is helpful instead of a completely useless blurb like the below. And finally, impatience. So participants might demonstrate impatience when they express a feeling that it's taking too long to solve a problem, to understand a solution or to answer a question, or when someone needs to repeat the same information over and over again. So after reviewing a patch, a maintainer wrote, I've looked at your patch for way too long now and you still don't see how you've shown it to be corrected. Okay, so now that we know what are the features of discussion that express incivility in code review discussions of rejected patches, then we can characterize how much incivility exists in code review discussions. So we classify the emails into technical, civil, and uncivil based on the discussion's features that they demonstrate. An, an email is technical if it contains only straightforward forward technical discussions and do not contain any feature of discussion. And technical emails, they represent 89% of the analyzed emails. Then, uh, uncivil emails are those that express at least one uncivil feature of discussion and 7% 7 of the code review emails, they are uncivil. And then we have the civil emails, which are those that express um, positive, neutral, or negative features of discussion, and none of those features, they are uncivil. So 4% of the analyzed emails, they are um, civil. And as expected, because of the technical field of LKML, most of the code review discussions of rejected patches, they are purely technical. However, if we look into the non-technical details, that is by summing up the uncivil and civil emails from the previous slides, around 11% uh, of the analyzed emails, we observe that 67% of the non-technical emails that are actually uncivil. And this is quite a lot and was uh, a surprising result to us. So now that we know what are the uncivil emails and their frequency, then we can assess the cause and consequence of those emails. To do this, uh, we split the analysis by analyzing the uncivil emails sent by either developers and maintainers. Uh, we have identified the many causes and consequences of uncivil communication in developers and maintainers' emails, 
and I'll be presenting here the most frequent cause of incivility and the most frequent corresponding consequence, consequences to those causes. So concerning uncivil emails sent by developers, the most frequent cause was first the maintainer's feedback. And the most frequent consequences are that the maintainer escalated the uncivil conversation. That means the conversation got heated. The maintainer discontinued further conversation, so the maintainer just stopped talking, and the maintainer kept discussing things in a civil way. The second most frequent cause was the violation of community conventions. So community conventions are uh, related to the workflow imposed by the community uh, by not understanding uh, why they need to do a tedious workflow or out of a surprise, a workflow that the develop developer was not informed of. And when that happened, the maintainer most frequently discontinued the conversation. Uh, also, developers and civil comments were sometimes triggered by being misinterpreted by the maintainer or being unable to follow the maintainer's structures. And when that happened, the maintainer most frequently escalated the uncivil conversation. Uh, in some times, developers were uncivil due to the maintainer's uncivil behavior. And when that happened, the maintainer often re reinforced their standpoint or escalated the uncivil conversation. And finally, developers were also uncivil due to inappropriate solution proposed by the maintainer. And when that happened, the maintainer often provided a technical explanation or escalated the uncivil conversation. Now, considering uncivil emails sent by maintainers, we found that maintainers were uncivil due to inappropriate solution uh, proposed by the developer. And when that happened, the developer often accepted the maintainer's criticism, discontinued further conversation, or discussed the problem in a civil way. Uh, maintainers were also uncivil when the source code submitted by the developers had a poor code quality, and the most frequent consequence were developers discussing the problem in a civil way or accepting the maintainer's criticism. Maintainers were also uncivil because developers were viol violating the community conventions, and when that happened, developers often discontinued uh, further conversation or accepted the maintainer's criticism. Also, uh, maintainers and civil comments were sometimes triggered by being misinterpreted by developers. And the most frequent consequences were the acceptance of the maintainer's criticism and also escalating the uncivil conversation. So now we know the cause and consequence of uncivil communication, so we can provide means to create healthier working environments for open source communities. We suggest two approaches for that. First is we call it proactive approaches, uh, which are approaches that are done to address the causes of incivility before it happens. And then we have the reactive approaches, which are approaches that can be done to address incivility after it happens. So for the proactive approach, we will provide suggestions on how to address the cause of incivility. And in this presentation, I will provide suggestions to only some of the causes. So when the cause of incivility is violation of community conventions, open source communities can include a training uh, for newcomers and developers to ensure that everyone is uh, aware about the community conventions. Also, maintainers should always include why the patch was rejected to give a feedback to the developer. And also, open source communities could uh, gamify the review process so that developers that follow the community conventions, they gain more reputation and status. When the cause of incivility was communication issues, so open source communities could develop a code of conduct focused on the code review process. That means that communities could uh, establish some guidelines on how maintainers should communicate uh, constructive feedback and also how developers could interpret the feedback. So when the cause of incivility was the maintainer's feedback, open source communities could include a training for maintainers on how to give constructive feedback and also a training for developers on how to handle rejections, uh, emphasizing that rejection is not a failure. Also, open source communities, they could make available coaching or mentoring sessions for maintainers. Uh, when the cause of incivility was inappropriate solution, then developers 
uh, should always include a technical explanation of their solution, including the downsides of the solution, the motivation of the, propose, the proposed patch, as well as the limitations. Um, when the cause of incivility was poor code quality, then open source communities could include a training for newcomers and developers to ensure that everyone is aware about the community's expectations in terms of code quality. Also, open source communities could adopt existing analysis, uh, code analysis tools and integrate them into the developer's workflow. So in addition to addressing the causes, so tools could be used by open source contributors to check if their emails are uncivil before they are sent to the mailing list. And a more fine-grained tool could also let contributors know what type of incivility uh, is present in their text by mentioning the discussion features that we have identified here in our study. So concerning the reactive suggestions, that is when incivility happens already, then community leaders, they need to do damage control and community members need to be informed and properly respond to incivility. So for that, open source communities could use bots that are constantly checking if the emails sent to the mailing list are uncivil or civil. And if uncivil discussions are found, then the community leaders uh, are warned and you know to take the appropriate measures. So we have provided some suggestions on how to prevent or mitigate incivility, but what about automa uh, automatically detecting incivility? So our first approach was to see if incivility could be detected through sentiment analysis tools. And for that, we tested three software engineering specific sentiment analysis tools called Sent4SD, Sent4Strength SE, and SentCR. Uh, we found that sentiment analysis tools, they tend to have high precision, low recall, and the overall performance tend to be very low. So for example, we found that tools detect negative sentiment with, uh, with a precision of 73%, but they miss up uh, to 91% of the cases. Uh, so we observed that incivility actually cannot be reliably captured by just analyzing the sentiment of a text. And this is because incivility has many dimensions not captured by those tools, such as the context of the conversation, in our case, is the previous emails in the email thread, also the familiarity among people and the granularity of analysis, if it's in the thread, in the email, or in the sentence level of analysis. Um, also, some features of discussion, they might be hard to be detected by those tools, such as irony, mocking, and threat. So concerning building incivility specific detectors, we suggest that researchers or open source communities could develop heuristics to identify the discussions features found in our study. Also to accurately detect incivility, these heuristics, they need to consider the context of the conversation, the familiarity among people and the granularity of analysis. Um, also in order to improve the performance of classifiers, an incivility specific lexicon for each discussion feature could be built. And that could be done based on our data set that is publicly available and could be extended to train machine learning models to detect incivility. So thank you so much for your attention. And to recap, we found that bitter frustration, name calling and impatience are the most frequent uncivil features of discussion. We also found that surprisingly two thirds of the non-technical discussions are uncivil. Uh, we also identified many causes and consequences of uncivil emails sent by uh, developers and maintainers, and we suggest many proactive approaches and reactive approaches on and also how to build incivility uh, specific detectors. So I invite you to read our paper for more details, and there are a lot of more interesting content and concrete suggestions made in the paper that I could not cover here in this presentation. And finally, we are conducting interviews with flaws uh, contributors to understand their opinions and their experiences related to uncivil communication. And please consider participating in our interview by filling out this short survey. And here on the left side uh, is my contact information. Please contact me if you have any questions or any points that requ require uh, further discussion. And thank you so much for your attention.